Vivek Oberoi and Aftab Shiv Desani in drag kissing each other. Criminals known as the Nanga Gang. And songs with lyrics like, I've got a rocket in my pocket, oh baby, come and launch it. I've just given you a quick taste of Grand Masti, the new adult comedy by director Indra Kumar. Every 10 minutes or so, you hit a low point and you think, okay, this film can't possibly sink anymore, but director Indra Kumar and co-writer Milap Milanzaveri surprise you. They lower the bar yet again. This film about three friends hoping to relive their wild days at a college reunion is purposefully puerile, brain dead and cheerfully offensive. Women are reduced to body parts, mostly heaving bosoms and jiggling rear ends. The ones who are single are perpetually trying to seduce men. The ones who are married worry about how they can be better wives, even while their husbands try their best to have affairs. The acting is abysmal, the humour is appalling and even the songs are pathetic. I can't think of a single reason why you should see this film. I'm going with half a star. I'll make sure everybody pays for this. I thought that in the age of Google, filmmakers would be reluctant to flat out steal someone else's work. John Day proves me wrong. Without a hint of discomfort, debutant director Ahishore Solomon lifts plot, scenes and even dialogue from the Spanish crime thriller Box 507. And then he brazenly gives himself a writer credit. Box 507 is an engaging film about a mild-mannered bank manager who loses his only child in a fire. Years later, he discovers that the fire was no accident. He sets out to topple the high and mighty who caused her death. It's an enjoyable but far-fetched premise. In Solomon's hands, the material becomes gross-out, violent, cartoonish and even unintentionally funny. Nasruddin Shah, with hair and skin coloured brownish-orange, plays the manager-turned-vigilante. And Randeep Huda is a psychotic cop chasing documents that the bank manager has. Solomon provides the cop with a backstory of sexual abuse and an alcoholic girlfriend who's so desperate for a baby that she stuffs a pillow into her shirt and cries, don't take my baby away. At one point, a character bites someone's tongue off. I think it's supposed to be dark and gritty. It's just tiresome. Nasir sleepwalks while Randeep snarls, growls and takes long, angry drags of cigarettes. Stealing a line from the great American critic Gene Siskel, I asked myself, is this film more interesting than a documentary of the same actors having lunch? The answer is no. I'm going with one and a half stars. <laughs> Excuse me for a second. I think your mother's here and she looks angry. In an interview with the independent newspaper, actor-producer Adam Sandler said that the cast of Grown Ups 2 showed up without a script on the first day. You will have no trouble believing that when you see the film. Grown Ups 2 is a series of gags strung together without the slightest attempt at telling a coherent story. Sandler plays Lenny, the successful Hollywood agent who moves back with his pals to the small town in New England where he grew up. The 40-something buddies are all grappling with families, tough wives and grown-up responsibilities. At one point, Lenny says, the party's over, fellas. We're irrelevant, we're losers, we're old. But these moments of insight are rare. Instead, what we get are pee, burp, vomit jokes. One of the characters can do a burp snort, which is a combination of burp, sneeze and fart. This is actually pretty funny, but most of the film is resolutely infantile. It begins with a deer urinating in Lenny's face and then running back with a bra hanging on its antlers and it's all downhill from there. Grown Ups 2 is too shoddy, lazy and low IQ to be fun. I'm going with one and a half stars. <laughs> 